Well, my friends, it's sure nice to be out here. I can hear the wind in the trees. It's not bad down at ground level. It doesn't affect the flight of the arrow too much. And today I'm going to teach you something that is extremely important, and I don't think anybody else ever brings it up. So I'll take responsibility for showing you this technique. <laughs> you know, I've talked an awful lot about having a relaxed right arm, relaxed hand, be as relaxed as a rope under tension, I will say. And also, remember that little story about the two little boys? I call the hands the two little boys. The two little boys are pulling on a towel. One lets go and the other falls down. Two little boys are pulling on a towel. One lets go and the other falls down. Two little boys are pulling on a bow. One lets go and the other falls down. It has to be like that. So let's talk about removing tension in the upper body. Now I've shown you the way where we can we'll put my bow down. I think I can show you better just with an arrow. But you know, there's the part about pushing it on, drawing to the anchor, relaxing the fingers, the arrow will go off. Then just leave your arms exactly like that and swivel at the waist until it's on. So that's one way. Or you will see sometimes uh, how you can uh, put it on and get back to your anchor and then of course you relax your hand and 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 you let go really gentle. When you're relaxing your hand what you're trying to do is remove the tension in your upper body. Well, this is what I'm thinking. Yes, we want to remove the tension in the upper body and in the right arm. But what we really want to do also is remove the tension in the left. It's the tension in the left, I think, that pushes it off to the left. And we're always told it's push and pull, push and pull. And I'm saying, no, it's not. It's balance power, balance power not push and pull. You push, you're going to push yourself off. You pull, you're going to pull yourself off. You've got to let that right hand just relax. And now, uh, instead, of, and, and there's different ways of putting the tip on, you know, like you can roll it on, or you can push it on, or you can start with it on. These days, I actually find that just pushing it on without worrying about a can't, just Pushing it on will work the best. So that's how I'm going to put it on. Now, the thing though is instead of relaxing so that it goes off to the right, I'm holding it on and I am relaxing my hand, but then my left hand comes back. Do you understand? take the tension off that hand by bringing it back. And I don't mean back, you know, a long way. I just mean a little tiny way, but it takes the tension off instead of pushing it on. You know, we've done the catra and all those kind of styles where we push. I'm saying that I think that this is better, okay? So just line it up straight and take a little tension off that's all and when you do that arrow will go pretty straight because you've removed the tension in the right hand but you know really there's no point in just moving removing the tension in the right hand if you don't remove it in the left also so get it back relax that right arm now remove the tension slightly and you should do fine also I only push remember I only push until the arrow goes straight. I don't push my arm out like this. I leave it a little bit like a spring. Okay? So uh, that's what I have to say. The big deal is actually backing the pressure off on the left instead of pushing. Just the slightest amount. And it'll go real good. Anyhow, 
I've said it enough times. No, let's go and just uh, prove that that theory works. <laughs> okay, back in a minute. Okay, my friends, so let's see if you can see anything from this angle. Remember, we're letting the pressure off instead of pushing it on. It's quite different. I have an instinct. If you watch all my movies, you'll see after I shoot, I often watch my back. It just comes natural. that pressure off. Pressure has to be balanced between the two hands. Okay. So remember, the two little boys pulling on the towel. One lets go and the other falls down. Well, if this little boy isn't pulling so hard and lets all the pressure off, he's not even going to fall down. He'll just sort of stay still. So what I'm saying here is yes, we have to be relaxed. We're going to let our hand relax and our fingers relax, but we're going to allow this hand to come back, straight back, not twisted, but straight back just the tiniest bit, it takes the pressure off, it balances the pressure between the hands, and when you do that, you'll start to get some hits. Okay? So that's what we want to do. Very unorthodox. We're not pushing and pulling, like they always say. We're balancing our hands and getting the pressure straight. I'll be back in a minute, guys. It's nice to listen to the, the wind from the trees. Sometimes bows break. Yeah, bows will break sometimes. You know, wooden bows, periodically they will break. Now, uh, something that I want to show you is that if you get so that your bow is on a bit of a cant, you see the tip is over here? When that bow breaks, most likely that piece will come back from that tip and go around your head. But if you hold a bow vertical and that bow breaks, that tip is coming straight into your face. Makes sense, doesn't it? People that shoot recurves are very used to sh holding the bow vertical, but bango or wacko. It's much better to have a canted bow if it breaks. Also, you know, bows are springs. And I had a guy recently be all into pulling the bow, pulling the bow, you know? Well, if you pull a bow far enough, you can break it. 
that's not really the idea. The idea is to feel that pressure in that spring. That's the idea. And uh, another thing about this uh, this bull coming straight back, yeah, I had a guy there about two weeks ago uh, snap a bow and get four stitches between his eyes right here, four stitches. So listen, um, uh, can't your bow. It's a lot better. I'm just really glad the guy didn't get whacked in the eye, you know? But that's the kind of thing that I would say. They're not just for pulling and pulling till you break them. And uh, here we got a few hits on on the bore again. Okay. Back in a minute. Well, my friends, just like a groundhog standing in the sun, getting warm. Pretty nice out here. Talking about archery theory, it really has a lot to do with pressure. That must be obvious. Pressure is more important than a split finger or three under or string walking or leaning or not leaning or bending your knee or not bending your knee or moving your head over or getting your eye over the line or so on and so forth. Good idea about the two little boys going on the towel. It's so true. When that pressure is released, all the forces go to neutral. If you can get that force going straight, you're doing good. But you know that often you've seen the arrow lined up perfectly and it's gone someplace else. That's because the two little boys are interfering with the bow. That's why I stress relaxation so much. If a string is relaxed, it will go tight. But if it's got kinks in it, it won't go straight. One of the secrets of shooting straight is liking cheese and eating grapes. We all hear often about relaxing the right side. Well, the truth is that the left has to be relaxed also. Now, here today, we're not shooting a long distance. We're not trying to kill things. We're not after that amount of power. We're trying to be still. So we're backing off the pressure a little bit. Even if I stretch it way out, I can still back it off a little bit but you know if you're really into just full power well of course you're not going to back it off or relax the fingers or anything you're just going to haul it so there's different ways of shooting in different traditions and for different purposes but generally speaking movement doesn't make you shoot straight movement makes you throw it off pushing harder than you're pulling, you'll push it off. Pulling harder than you're pushing, you'll pull it off. Horace Ford said that most people miss because from the time that they took their aim until they got it back, they had moved. You know, you can also miss very easy just by pressing, you know. How often do you press and because of the tension in the bow, your hand suddenly moves and it goes farther than you were hoping. All these things are factors. But anyhow, what we're up to is falling in line. If we move the 
left, we latch the right again. Just lining it up straight without interfering with the bow. <laughs> Anyhow, enough talking. Let's go back and do some shooting. Okay, guys. We're walking out of the forest. And the sun's getting low. I've got a buck down here at, uh, at 27 yards. Okay, we'll uh, accept that. The uh, thing that I'm doing right now is, because of this distance, I'm not backing off the pressure at all. I need my pressure at this, at, at this distance. So I'm simply bringing the arrow around, pushing it around till the tip goes on, and wherever that is, I relax my arm on that line, and now I move my head over to look along that line. So I'm not pulling to my head. I'm pushing the tip on, drawing the bow all the way back and letting it relax on that line of pressure and now I look along that line and aim. And uh, if I do that, pray a lot. I get lucky sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's continue on, boys. Okay, now, so a couple more targets and we'll be out of the forest. Now, this uh, heart is just about where the square is on that white patch. Got it. Yeah, you know, the, uh, again, I'm just bringing it around so that the arrow goes right on the target, right on the center line, wherever that is, wherever that heart line is. And, uh, and I'm just bringing my hand right back to that little magic spot. And, uh, I'm allowing my arms to relax on that spot, on that line, and I'm not bringing my hands into my face, I'm bringing my face to my hands, if that makes any sense, in some place around there, there it is there, okay, back in a minute. Okay guys, so they've got a, uh, a fox out here this time. real sweet. Anyhow, that's what we're doing. We're just, uh, if I can describe it again, putting that tip on and we're just bringing it around until it, until my arm relaxes and it's all hanging in line. At this point it's got nothing to do with me aiming other than I can tell that the tip is lined up and I let this fall in behind, relax, and now I just move over and look along it. When I let go, it'll go straight. But if I was doing this kind of thing, pulling and pulling and pulling and having to bring it in here and then adjust and everything, that's not so accurate. It's really just pull the tip on and learn to relax your arms so that everything lines up with the pressure in your arms. Now aim the pressure. Oops. 
said this a lot of times. And, uh, you know, if you do that, you'll get some hits. Okay, guys. Back in a minute. Okay, guys, so now we've got a uh, wild boar up here. It's our last target for the day. Three's good. Four is better. Okay, anyhow, that's it for today. Uh, so we went over shooting really close. If you're really close on that, you can let a little bit of pressure off. Uh, but generally speaking, at a regular distance, you don't want to do that. So in this case here, again, all I'm doing is putting the tip on, bringing the arm back and letting it just hang by pressure, and now looking where it's aiming. And in doing that, it's pretty simple stuff. And... Uh, And we'll get some hits. Okay. Okay. Have fun. I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Okay, guys. So here we have a, uh, a caribou. They've got it set up at 27 yards. Sweet enough for me, I'll just leave it. It's really important to uh, get your eyes out of the sun. The, the idea at this distance, uh, if I allowed the bow to come back a little bit, I'm losing a bit of power. So, you know, at the target distance, like 20 yards, you relax those hands and let them come together slightly. Uh, you'll remove a lot of tension. But in this case, I'm basically holding it on, nice and still with the left. And I'm just relaxing the fingers and relaxing the fingers. And when I relax them, that arrow goes off the tiniest bit. When that relaxes, that arrow goes off the tiniest bit. I simply correct it. It doesn't go off very much. And uh, that's what I'm doing. And if you do that, you'll get some nice hits. So anyhow, I'll just take this guy, you know. But it's all in the, uh, the relaxing of the hands and getting things to work together. You've got to get those two hands so that they're not torquing along the uh, power line. Okay, back in a minute. Sort of a African animal down here at uh, 30 yards. It's not an easy shot with a bow like this, to tell you the truth. Not really. I don't know where I got him. <laughs> I hit him someplace.
one bounced it right off his back. But, uh, yeah, all like this, I tell you, this is about maximum. Really, they're only good 20, 25 yards is much better. side and anyhow uh, you know a bow like this it's not an easy thing to shoot uh, I really find that about 20 25 yards is quite good that's about how far you can shoot a pistol accurately but after that it does get harder you know, it just does. So, if uh, from a practical hunting point of view, you know, uh, uh, 15 to 25 yards, rabbits, squirrels, deer, if you can get them in close enough. But these magnificent shots of, uh, and, and it's not like magnificent shots haven't ever been done, but they're much more difficult, much more. Anyhow, that's a fact. And uh, like I say, I, I bounced one off his back. But really, you know, there's one hit, there they are. So both were a bit left, one on his hip, one on his side. And that's about it. Okay. Be back in a while. Okay, guys, so when we came down here, now these are the actual two hits. And you can see they're off on the left. Not great shooting. And that's at uh, 30 yards downhill uh, with a little animal. Uh, anyhow, what I want to show you is, see those arrows? Now watch this. I bounced one off his back. Now where would my arrow be? Boy, if I had a white arrow, I might be able to find it. You see how easy that is to find, even though it bounced? It bounced and it went about 15 yards. So, if you ever have arrows that go into the woods, this is one of the reasons why you have white ones. Better luck next time, Gar. <laughs> Bye now. Okay, now. Oh, the lonesome call of the Royal <laughs> Railway. Okay, we put six on him that time. When I was shooting from back there, I, uh, I was putting my arrow tip just in behind his head. Well, when I get down there, I see that the reason I'm hitting him in the ass is because I was aiming at his ass. But the optical illusion of the neck and the lower back 
had me lining up, you know, behind the head. Anyhow, uh, we got to learn about uh, why white arrows are good. The uh, and and here uh, at this distance, I wasn't backing it off. You know, backing it off if you're hunting a uh, squirrel or uh, rabbits or things that are very close, and it's cool enough that my nose is starting to run, the, uh, is okay. But any, uh, any other distance past 20 uh, yards, really, you need to bring it around. And I'm hitting it here because I'm simply bringing it around and allowing the arm to fall on the line of pressure and looking along the line. And uh, that's how we redeem ourselves. But anyhow, there's the same target. And uh, you can see that we got a few more hits on him that time. Okay, have fun. And there it is. There it is, the end of a perfect day, watching the sun go down through the trees. It's a wonderful world. Okay, guys, have fun. Bye now.